Welcome back to Vicki's Country Home. I've recorded a lot of videos, but I'm sorry I really haven't had a whole lot of time for editing. So I have all kinds of bits and pieces that I'm going to bring to you today, and I hope you enjoy. Well, we have babies. I have two little baby peeps that have just hatched. And I was across the house and heard them peeping from there. They are just really ready to come out. So, here's that one down there. So that's my babies. Hey y'all. Well, today is Jeez, I don't even know. July 11th. It's Monday, and I haven't been around a lot because for one week we've had fires from every direction, um, one after the other, and we've kind of had that as our focus of everything and what we're doing, so I haven't really gotten anything together for you guys. So, in the meantime, I've done a lot of little pieces of video, but nothing made sense. So, I'm just going to kind of tell you what I've been up to. Well, first of all, these little guys hatched. I had them in my incubator. Um, they were in there 21 days, and they hatched on Friday. And this one's not real happy, and it says, put me back in there under the lamp. I don't want to be out here. I don't want to be a YouTube star. But they're just cute as all get out. So I've been hatching my babies and taking care of them. At the same time, we've been under evacuation orders apparently for a few days. We didn't leave. Um, it was more of a concern that we have one road in and out of our valley. And if the fire had cut us off, it would have been a bad thing. And also the firefighters coming in and out, we didn't want to block them. Are you ready to go back? You are? Okay, hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, my baby's much happier now. So, get on with the rest of the video. So, also, I've been making kombucha. And this has been in here oh, probably close to 10 days now. And I'm really excited because it looks good. It's got the scoby growing and the big scoby just kind of floats up and down. So that's working out well. And I've made more sourdough, although I wanted to record it, but you know, you just don't have time when you're looking at everything else in the fires. And this is my bread box. This is what I do with my bread because here it's so dry. If I leave it out, it's just gonna dry hard as a rock. Makes great bread crumbs, but that's about all it's good for. So this was a skillet loaf, and it's a softer loaf. It's not as crunchy, which we really like. Makes good sandwich bread, and I'm about to try a new, adding some additions into that, so I may do a video on that one. Just keeping that all going, I've been doing work in the garden, getting all of the drip irrigation in. There's a few things I think I have to tweak. They're, they're working just not as well as I'd like. So I haven't run away. I've just been trying to deal with everything here and I will be getting back into my videos. So I wanted to apologize for that, but kind of been distracted. So, we'll probably have an upcoming video with doing some sourdough bread, maybe some soap. I really need to make some Castile soap, and I've got to make some of my homemade shampoo bars, which is all we use, because we've gone through most of what I had. And I need to make some more of my chocolate soap. I'm, I'm getting pretty low on that, and I have a show coming up in October. And all the soap takes at least six weeks to, to cure and to dry. I usually won't let it sit for less than that. So I may bring you along to see some of those. And 
in the meantime, oh, and we had 4th of July, and I may show a little bit of video on that one. Brian got his Pit Boss barbecue. It's like the Big Green Egg, except it cost a whole lot less. So I may show you some of that, may show you some of just what we did around here, and maybe a little bit of the fires, and that was pretty scary, but it's part of living here. We had a really bad winter. All of the rain just made the weeds go crazy, and, and now we're seeing what happens because it has been dry and those weeds have dried out, so they just create enormous amount of fuel that catches fire and it's really hard to put out especially when you combine it with the winds we have up here in northern Nevada. The winds come off the western slope, the eastern slope of the Sierras and they just sweep through here and it really causes a problem when we got a fire. So I'll kind of show you bits of, of all those things and I just wanted to say I haven't gone away and we'll talk again soon. Well, this is our view of what has been on fire for the last few days. We are still told we're supposed to be evacuated, but right now we're staying in place. There, there's almost no smoke coming from that whole area. They, that helicopter is still dropping water and the spotter planes up there so we just keep a close eye on it if conditions change and we see any kind of danger we'll be out but for now we stay home so this morning i'm out checking my garden because i've been kind of preoccupied so i'm out here this morning and i'm in my squash garden that used to be the old chicken coop yard and right there is my cantaloupe. Those are all zucchini. And across the back there, I've got a couple of butternut squash. And in the middle, I have a couple of tomatillos. Back there, cucumbers, yellow squash, and a couple of watermelon. And so far, everything in here is looking just beautiful. I've gotten several zucchini and several yellow squash out. We have all of the irrigation running. Might need to tweak it, but we're it's up and running so we aren't having to come out twice a day to water. But this is looking really good. And this is my bigger garden and everything, most of it's looking pretty good. I have my kale cabbage, Swiss chard, and some parsley that I'm letting go to seed. The big ferny stuff is my asparagus. It finished producing and now I let it grow so that it can create energy for next year. And back here, I have broccoli that I'm letting go, but Brian might juice those leaves. He likes to do that. A lot of green beans and peas, along with a bunch of potatoes that came up from last year. I thought I got them all, but you never know. A little bit more Swiss chard down here mixed in. And this green all over it is purslane, which is a weed. But this weed is really good for you. It's got all kinds of nutrition in it. And I figure. I'll let it go. It's good in stir fries and it's good in salads. I munch on it right out of the garden. And I have these grow bags back here and I've got more beans in there, a few peas right there. And this is my garlic, which hopefully it's almost ready to harvest. I've got a couple of scapes going, so I may take those out, but they're getting really big, so I'm hoping I get some beautiful garlic out of that. And I planted some peppers here with all the crazy stuff. They really haven't done much, but I do have some, a few carrots that made it. 
And a lot of this was because of that crazy freeze we had in June. You just Nothing much liked that. Got some basil. I've got a couple of pepper plants. And there's three of my tomato plants right here. And there's my not-so-feral cat. Hi, Cadence. And then these are my blackberries right here, and I've got a bunch of new blooms on it, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm trying to hold them up with these wires to try and contain them because they were getting everywhere, and I need to stick a few in there. And so far it seems to be working great. They were sprawled all across the pathway, and now most of them are contained. Like I said, I'm going to tighten up the wires and tuck some more behind it. And then my raspberries are down there. And I have raspberries going across the back of the bed too. Those are all volunteers. I didn't plant those. In fact, this guy right here came up and I'm going to have to pull him out. I don't want him there. Those are my strawberries. And I've had those maybe four years. So that bed's looking nice. And then this is where most of my tomatoes are. That's a big beef and boy it's getting big. And I have a few tomatoes down here. In fact, you might be able to see there's a couple of my tomatoes that look like they're turning red. One that's split. I have to look at that. This one, I'm gonna have to look at. It looks like it's not doing too good. So I'll be looking at that. Those back there are all Romas and some more beans behind it in the bags. So most of all, everything's looking good, except for this guy, and that was since yesterday. So, and this is more of that purslane. And actually, if you put it in a hanging basket, it's really pretty and it flowers, but mostly it's just, it's good to eat. So, I'll take you over and show you my grapevines and my fruit trees. See you in a minute. And these are some big pots. I built up kind of a platform out of pallets and cinder blocks and put a little bit of chicken wire around it to try and keep rabbits and such out of it. But I've got some of the oregano that I took out of the main garden and I replanted some of it here. I'm gonna put some in the ground before winter because I don't know that it'll live in the pots, but I know it, it will survive the winter in the garden. I've got some okra. I've never grown it in pots before, but I was told that it might be good. So hopefully it will turn out. And then I have some red romaine, which I've never grown before. We'll see how that's doing. And then I have more okra here and more red romaine. This is my dwarf peach tree. I love it. It's not too tall, but it's really spreading, so that's nice. And it's got a number of peaches on here. I hope you can see that. Um, not a whole lot, but there's, there's a few. This is the first year it's produced. And there's my little redneck bird chaser. And so far, these things seem to be working. They're old canning jar lids, and they flash around in the sun and clank together. And they actually sound kind of nice. Let's see if I can... So when the wind's blowing, you hear that. Let's see if I can find... There's another little peach down there. And some more, and there's more back in the center of the tree. So, so far this tree's doing very well. I really haven't done anything but water it, so praying that it does, keeps going well. And then over here are my wild grapevines that, with everything going on, I have not had time to prune and train. And I gotta do that like now. They need to get up. So, I've got four older grapevines. These are black manukas. They're table grapes, and they're really tasty. And then over here, I have two new grapevines this year. 
And this one is a Chardonnay, and it's got grapes on it, but I'm not sure what's going on with the leaves. I'm going to have to look at that. The new growth looks good. So I've just got to find out what that's doing. And then the one back there is Cabernet, and it's not a ton of growth, but it looks pretty good. So I'll take you out and show you my other fruit trees. This has a lot of weeds in there, but there's one of my rhubarbs. And that one has done pretty well, but I think it's time to divide it. It's really slowed down. More rhubarb and more weeds. I gotta get out here. As soon as the smoke clears, this rhubarb I planted last year and I thought it was dead. It came back this year, but the grasshoppers have been eating it like crazy. So yesterday I came out and put diatomaceous earth on it. I'm hoping that that puts a stop to it. Time will tell. Those are my two apple trees. And as you can see, they just lean so far. In fact, we're going to try and brace them up. This is how crazy our winds are. These trees were growing straight. They've been here for several years, but with all the wet and with all the wind, they just keep leaning. So we have to get out, try and stake them up, pull them back up right a little bit. But I have a few apples on them. This will be, again, the first time. And over here is my little cherry tree I planted last year. It's upright, which, yay, that's one good thing. And it's it's got a bunch of cherries on it. Um, they're not quite ripe. We tasted some yesterday. They're pretty tart. So hopefully these will be ready in a day or two. We can come out and pick these. And then my subtle solar panels and wind generator right back there. And the wind is not blowing a lot, thank you, because the fires are just horrible. I, this is probably the worst year we've ever seen. We know it's because of the wet winter we had. There's so much growth. You can see around me where you mostly see the green weeds, because weeds are what we have out here. But beyond that are the taller weeds. And here in this green area is where Shana and Brian have gone out with our DR trimmer and I mean it's like a giant weed whacker basically cutting this all down it's a huge area but we have to create a fire break so they've been out here doing tons of work and probably you're gonna have to go over it again but let's hope not anyway this is what I've got right now so thankful that so far the fires have been contained in one area. Oh, there goes the wind now. And that our firefighters have been safe and doing such a wonderful job. Oh, and by the way, I'm not sure if you can see this in the video or not, but we have fishing lines strung around our garden and around here. We were having trouble with the deer and the antelope just destroying our trees. As you can see, I mean, they they got pretty ragged looking because the deer were just, they'd come in and it was like a buffet. So we saw this idea and we put up posts around it and then strung the 30, um, 30 weight monofilament line clear at several levels around here. I think we have three rows right here. And so far, it's been doing the job. We've had a huge buck antelope that's been hanging out on our property. And we've tried to sh shoo him away and he just keeps coming back. But we know he tested this once because antelope will go under or through. They don't go over. And this line right here was broken. So we replaced it. And since then, we really haven't had any damage from that. So we're hoping that this continues to work. They get smart, so hopefully 
they won't figure it out. The, the idea is that they can't, the deer can't see it and don't know how high to jump. And obviously the antelope felt it, but, and broke it, but he didn't go inside. So we're very thankful for that. And there's a view toward my garden in Chicken Coop. And the fire was just back there, just above our roof line in the distance. So we are so fortunate and thankful. We're looking over at where the fire it's not out. We see some wisps of smoke still over there, but they've called off the evacuations, finally. That was Saturday. This is Monday. There's, like, like I said, there's just still some really wispy smoke over there on the, oh, the right-hand side of this. But it looks like they've got most of it out, and they've taken most of the equipment that was fighting with the helicopters, the planes, a lot of the ground crews that were fighting it by hand, although I see still a couple of vehicles up there. But they've mostly left to go take on these other fires, so it's really a bad situation all across the West, and just keep us all in your thoughts and prayers. This is what it looks like at night, and it was really scary because you couldn't tell really how far away it was. And one of my favorite movies of all time that I've loved for years is the movie Always, and it's about the pilots who put out these fires. And we were either fortunate or not so fortunate to see exactly the kind of work that they do. I just, I'm in awe of these people. You can't see me, but thank you guys. Got like right over my head. Don't drop anything here. Everybody up there's okay. A lot of new people that I don't think are prepared for this stuff. Yeah, I saw it at Mid Road. Over there, Mike and Terry's. Wow, look at how low he is yep. near these hills. I that just is amazing. Think of that movie always. I want to watch that too. Yeah. I think I want to watch always again because it makes Look at me this, this just jump. makes me appreciate it. Watch wow, it this this is that's a huge plane coming within what a hundred feet. He didn't he didn't drop. Wow. Wow. Okay, he's gonna come in low again. Something must not have been right. He must not have been lined up. Wow, look at him bank. He's, low. He's a, what, 150 feet over our house? Maybe, maybe. I mean, he's, he is right over our heads, guys. busy. I give them thumbs up because <laughs> this is this is amazing. Low. 
Yep, we need to watch always again. And pray for these guys. There he goes. Yay. Love the orange stuff. Now for the lighter side, Shayna wanted a tiny pool and she's going to have a tiny home. So we got her her tiny pool and she took olive oil and tried to cool her off. Olive really wasn't interested. Brian got his pit boss and he's all excited. And so he made wonderful country style ribs and then he made us a brisket. So that was the good part of the week. Sometimes we just have to remember that all these things happen, and they happen for a reason, but life goes on, and you can't stop. You have to keep going and do your best, always. So, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you all had a blessed week, and if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.